you know, there is a, this big kind of belief in the field that if you just expose children to some foods, they'll just like it, just because you keep exposing them to it. And I think we show that this is not necessarily true. If some people are genetically predisposed to not like broccoli, you won't be able to get them to eat it unless you understand why they don't like broccoli. You know, why is broccoli not good for them? So I'm Nicola Pirastu. Um, I'm a statistical geneticist, so I study uh, human genetics. Human nutrition is one of the most you know, important determinants of human health. Um, and we know that you know, in recent, recent years, we've had like a very big epidemic of obesity and other related disease. All the things we know we shouldn't be eating are actually good. Right, so like junk food, for example, we should, we can eat some, we shouldn't be eating too much. Um, so the question we ask is why do people find this food so good? Is there something, you know, within our biology, which is making us, you know, find this so good that, you know, we cannot stop eating them. To do this, we thought to look in genetics and we thought, are there some genetic variants who predispose us to eat you know, some people to eat some foods and some people to eat others. The interesting part is that when you looked at the genetics, there is no correlation between how much you're predisposed to liking, you know, highly palatable foods and the other foods. So it's not that if you like, let's say meat, you won't like also salad. It's not a dichotomy. The other thing we did was to look at, you know, what is big dimensions correlated with other stuff, right? So for example, we found that people, you know, this highly palatable foods also correlated with other not so healthy behaviors like, you know, not exercising or, you know, spending time like being sedentary. So you could imagine once we understand the biology and the processes, we could start thinking of changing the preparation of the foods, for example, or finding, you know, stratifying the people in groups and then deciding, you know, and, and maybe devising some products specific for that group of people. We could also devise for, you know, the most extreme cases of obesity, for example, you know, drugs, which would, you know, change their food preferences. 